Hey, 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 isn't this a fun filter? It is Sarah Jane from Access Your True Nature. And I've got two dogs here, it's about to rain. And I wanted to talk to you today about mothers. Seeing it is February, Self Love Day. And um, I've had this come up a bit on the, hi Anjana, nice to see you. Something that's coming up a lot for my clients and in clinic and some of the conversations that I've been having around mindfulness and the mindfulness process and how <laughs> we go back on the timeline to get to the root cause of what's coming up in our lives in the present moment. Hello Violet. So I wanna ask you a question. If you think, or who do you think has had the deepest impact on your ability to completely love yourself from the earliest stage of your life? Hi, Natasha, playing with these filters. So type that in the comment below. And if you said your mother or your primary caregiver, then you would probably be very correct because this is something that I really wonder about a lot about being a bad parent and I'm talking with Tony Black today on the Live Out Loud Summit and we're talking a lot around what it means to have a mother that is perhaps ambivalent or narcissistic or maybe was avoidant in her attachment style to you um, when you were a child and remember everything affects us pre seven year olds so I want to um, you know, just look at what the impact of having an unloving or uh, mentally or emotionally absent mother can have on your ability to love yourself and to create meaningful or long lasting relationships. Because remember from birth, babies with loving mothers get very um, positive feedback. Hi Natasha, yes, I'm glad you caught me live. So we're talking about mothers and their effect on secure attachment or bonding pre three year old because if if you're in, if you were a mother or you had a mother that wasn't able to stay present with you to give you the nurturing and the care that you required, um, you know I suggest that you take an, the ACE test uh, to see how high your ACE aces are um, and you can do that over at accessyourtruenature.com um, to see what your adverse childhood experiences have maybe played an effect on your health or the way that your life is coming out because as much as we're not talking about the big events um it, it's it's about the chronic unpredictable toxic stress and um i spoke to a lady today who was saying you know i'm such a strong person and in her coping mechanisms she's always been the rescuer or the overgiver in a relationship and she was sent to boarding school at six years old she was just a little thing and she had to fend for herself and and so it was really it's really fascinating to look at how this plays out in our lives because it's you know, it's it's when you if you've known an unkind or an avoidant mother, nobody wants to talk about this stuff. But when we get into process, a lot of times in clinic with my clients, when we get to the root cause and we can name and identify areas of your life where your mothers have maybe impacted you negatively or positively, that you know, it doesn't mean that you don't love your mothers. Uh, that's not true at all. But we have to name it and and heal that and grow our parts. And you know, it's all these comments that people make about, oh, it's your mother and you know, you have to love her. And generally the people that, that say things like that have no idea how painful that situation can be. And most women don't talk about it or they gloss over the issue while underneath it, they're feeling really alone or um, very wounded. Yes, exactly. A lot of shame in it, Anjana. And you know, we're all grown up now and we do. We all um, are addicted to the desire to create safety and, and oftentimes we aren't safe enough to do this and it can show up as a lack of confidence of that sort of primary feminine uh, person in your life uh, wasn't there for you and this can cause low self-esteem where you feel like if your mother didn't like you how can anybody else and then you start feeling inferior and unlovable and then you start to attract the narcissist in that codependent relationship where you feel like you need um, to be acknowledged as worth loving and this is where this disease to please comes from where we grow up constantly seeking approval or looking for reinforcement from a mother figure because we've been lacking 
taking this kind of feedback in our lives and as adults we can often have trouble drawing healthy boundaries um, asking for what we want because we're constantly looking for approval from others or um, we give up our wants and desires in, a, in order to keep everybody else happy and then we get into this repetitive pattern in our adulthood in the relationships that we choose where as I've said before one of the common ones is getting involved with people that are emotionally um, not available you know they're ambivalent or they're avoidant or uh, where people attract similar mean or judgmental or narcissistic people especially women in their lives where they're repeating this pattern of constantly seeking for a mother figure that will show you affection or approval in some way so when we have these kinds of unresolved childhood issues that come from chronic unpredictable strength uh, we haven't shifted enough inside to create a new outcome and we're often drawn to people that are familiar to us in some way because subconsciously we're seeking this desired outcome of you see I'm unlovable you see um, I'm not worthy of love you see there must be something wrong with us so we're constantly validating what we don't want and we want this um, the, this positive validation that maybe we didn't get as our mother so without becoming aware of this pattern we often end up repeating uh, a similar reality over and over again or what I call a Mobius strip where we just keep going round and round and changing various um, versions of the same story that you're unlovable so any Mobius strips particles and pieces that are holding any and all of this in place would you be willing to just let it go and know that they did the best that they possibly had with what they had and you did too and then you know look at asking some of the questions of of when you're triggered by a woman in your life that makes you feel the shame or that old stuff look at why does this dynam dynamic feel familiar to you or where have you felt like this before or who does this person remind me of and where do you feel that in your body because when you're aware and able to identify this in your body this is the first ship where you let your body realize that you're creating your own safety as the mature adult maternal figure for your for your child parts and I took a lot about this in attachment style theory uh, where you know we really look deep in how these relationships impact our rela relationships later on in relationship to everything you know our love relationships our business relationships all of it and where the body holds on to that you know the issues really in the tissues and I you know I know I've talked about ambivalent attachment today which is what happens when you've learned from your experiences that intimacy and connectedness aren't safe so you never fully invest in the relationship and this is the avoidant um, attachment style where you're saying I'm fine or you're not expressing yourself and often in the physical it can show up as thyroid issues or weight issues or um, you know a chronic fibromyalgia or any kind of body pain because you're addicted to this type of attachment style because you find relationships stressful and that creates inflammation in your body so you take yourself out of the relationship and often this comes out as being um, abandoned or rejected in your relationship uh, because you're trying to make this lie true that you're unlovable and then you go out looking for external validation to make yourself right and you give yourself up does that make sense so give me some hearts or loves because I want to give you a couple of ways that you can start shifting this one degree in your patterns and your coping mechanism so you get to grow your child parts as a secure loving mother that maybe you never had and remember none of this is your fault um, you're not to blame here and neither is your mother and if you haven't you can use the forgiveness meditation uh, where, where this can be very cathartic in healing those parts and listen to my interview today with uh, Tony on the Live Out Loud um, summit because we're going to really talk more about this and then you can start to look at um, creating your own way you know creating your own safety and if you did receive criticism or judgment or you felt like you were never enough you know I know that one really really well and that disease to please um, that used to run my life because I felt like oh my god 
um, I wasn't worthy of love. And just give those child parts a voice and treat them gently. Treat them like you would a, a helpless baby. And be allowance, be an allowance, be impatient, and just know all those stories that maybe you were told about yourself is not true. That child is you, and she came in this world perfect and loving and divine in her true nature, and you're, she's still in there. And then you can start looking at your work dynamics and your relationships, where, and just notice where you're repeating those old addictive patterns in some way, shape, or form to get this mother love that you desire because when you can start valuing your relationships then you can start choosing the people that see you in your highest greatest good and you have to be really honest here so look at the people in your life that are constantly criticizing or judging you or making you feel ashamed and we're talking about women here and once you have a list of any of these unhealthy toxic relationships then you can start energetically shifting your truth around who's filling you up, who's depleting you, um, who you want to keep, who you want to nurture, and who you want to let go of, because that's when you get to live your life on purpose. And, you know, we choose our families. So, you know, if you feel somewhere that you'd like to deepen your relationship with your mother, or maybe you've already done a lot of that work, look at some of the friendships you can have with older women who treat you with love and respect and can be you know, it can be a very healing experience to find somebody like that. And, and realizing that your mother is never going to change, it can be difficult. So choosing healthy relationships to replace the dysfunctional one can be very, very healing and very, very life changing in all areas of your life. And, and know that, you know, you have the power of choice and you get to choose to keep repeating the old patterns or you get to choose to change them. Um, I never forget, uh, once I hired a business uh, coach to help me with, with some parts of my business and it was one of those energetic sort of yeses where I, I just felt attracted to her. There was a softness in her voice. She had a, a very maternal, round, full, earthy body and I, I worked with her for a year and eventually met up with her in America and when I you know when I hugged her and there was a few ups and downs on our relationship where I felt like I was coaching her more than I was paying for the coaching but you know things do, relationships don't often show up the way that we want them to or look the way that what like we think they're gonna look and you know I came out of the other side at the first hug she gave me where I kind of just I just kind of sunk into her beautiful big bosom and and just allowed myself to receive for her for the time that we were together and I realized oh my gosh this is what I was attracted to was this beautiful nurturing kind motherly motherly energy and I'm not saying my mother never loved me or showed me any affection but that there was something there that was just a desire that my body required and she fulfilled that. So, you know, I kind of always laugh because the gift in that relationship had nothing to do with my business and everything to do with my business of living my life fulfilled and, and in joy and knowing that, that I was enough, you know, that I was loved and I was worthy of love. And we always laugh about it because she, she did in that moment and that time of what I was asking for, she fulfilled that role of the nurturing, motherly um earthy energy that i was i was asking for at the time my body was asking for i didn't know consciously that i was asking for that i, I wanted to hire a business coach so you know it was a hefty investment but so worth it because i got to heal parts and pieces of myself you know when you just kind of feel the tears well up and the lump in your throat and i just i just felt so held and so seen by her and you know what, if I had to invest in that again, of course I would. Um, so part of this too is to let go of the expectations of what you think mothering or, you know, if you're growing children, and uh, you know, your children are growing you too. Um, and let go of, of the expectation of what it looks like to be a good mother or a, uh, you know, a, I always say I'm a bad mother um, because I don't parent the way that other people parent and maybe looking on the outside into my life and my dynamic with my growth partner Thalia, it might not look 
um, like somebody else's version of mothering. So yes, you're right, Anjona. We're all still trying to heal the wounded parts of us from other people's in our lives. Absolutely, yeah. Um, you know, and I think I think the key part there is to own our part in it. That you know, we chose the the parents that we chose, um, knowing that we have incarnated in a body to to experience what it feels like to be human at this time with the people that we choose to be our family. Um, I, I always kind of laugh. Um, at my acronym for family meaning fucked up and mainly interested in limiting you and you know is it true or is that just an expectation that family's there to grow us and seeing it as a gift and and really deepening into forgiveness you know forgiving ourselves for ever thinking um, that we didn't sign up for it or that our parents or us parenting our children um, that we're not doing the best that we can with what we have and being willing to be wrong so let go of any expectations and and be will be willing to just um, soften into that you know tread gently on yourself um, there is a couple of great uh, webinars that I recorded on SoundCloud uh, around healing the abandoned child and also um, healing the mother wound. So so I'll post the links below when I get a chance. My dog is woofing at somebody. Um, so I'll leave it at that. Um, post your comments and your questions and if you know somebody that might benefit from listening to this, uh, please like it, share it and uh, just trust you are enough. You are doing the best that you can and that you are loved and so loved and deepen into some self-care and self-mothering as we move into this week. All right, take care. Bye. Mwah.